All right, family, we're in the house. This is the General Sarah Sumseti, and today we're going to be dealing with sacred terms for black people decoded in a ancient literature. This is going to be a, a four-part series where we're going to break down some uh, sacred terms that's very prevalent throughout much of the sacred literature in Africa, uh, the uh, Hebrew, the uh, Islamic, even the uh, Hindu Kush. The Vedas. And so it's very important that we look into these terms because they are so heavily used in sacred literature. Uh, what's happening really is we're reading, but we're not understanding. And the reason why we are not understanding because we don't know the true meanings to these words. So we read, and but we don't get to the deeper meanings. You know, we speak, but the words are mute because we lack the understanding of what they really mean. So today we, we will be unlocking the mysteries of the ancient world. Yeah, we will be unlocking and revealing black divinity. And you know, throughout the world, we have been cast as a people of no history. And today we're going to prove that that's just absolutely not true. Uh, make sure you get on uh, while we're here. Make sure you get over to KingSeti.com online marketplace. Official d uh, DVDs, lectures by the General Sarah Rasul Seti, T-shirts and hoodies, African and comedic jewelry, holistic tonic, tonics and remedies, and much, much more. Also get over to Seti University of Ancient and Modern African Wisdom and Knowledge, the complete General Sarah Rasul Seti website. Hundreds of lectures and videos, too raw for YouTube, band videos, SETI debates, Freemasonry, ancient civilization and mythology, and much, much more. Join the day. And make sure you subscribe, you know, to both of my YouTube pages, actually three YouTube pages, General SETI YouTube page, Sarah Soon SETI YouTube page, because you know SETI Live is lit. Now, as we start to deal with, uh, Ham, you know, which is has many derivatives such as cam, such as a uh, charm, even psalm. You know, it is it, it's, it's stretched across the Kushite world, you know, and it has the basic understanding of black, which we will prove today. Now, you know, uh, even chemistry, even Camelot has the African base, the root of blackness at the foundation. You know, when you talk about Camelot and you talk about uh, uh, King Arthur and the Twelve Knights, which ain't nothing, uh, Knights of the Round Table, which is nothing but the solar mythos taken up out of ancient Egypt. Chemistry, chem, meaning black, coming out of the uh, comedic uh, vocabulary, meaning black. And so you see that, you know, many of these ancient scriptures are revealing our black divinity, but we don't understand it. And so when we speak, we don't even speak the true meaning of what it actually means. Only what we've been taught by many of our oppressors who are no more, you know, just as ignorant as many of our own people are, you know. And so when we talk about harm and calm, what will unlock to us is the origin of many great civilizations, Ethiopia, Kush, Egypt, Canaan, Nim uh, Babylon, which was found, founded by Nimrod, Sumer, Assyria, even Champa and uh, uh, the Khmer and, uh, you know, of the uh, South uh, East Asia, you know, which was also a stronghold of the Ethiopian Empire. We're going to talk about Hammurabi. We don't know. We don't understand that. Hammurabi, who was the lawgiver of Mesopotamia. Abraham. You see, Abraham. Beth, you know, Bethlehem, but which is actually Bethlehem, which I'm going to get off into the fact that the Hebrew, the Arabic, even the so-called Medunata does not have vowels. And so the vowels become interchangeable. You see, so it could be Bethlehem, it, it, it could be Bethlehem. Both of them speak to blackness, okay? And specifically, Egypt, okay? It's specifically Egypt. So when you see the Ham and 
you know, in Hammurabi, Abraham, Bethlehem, it's the occult understanding that the wisdom from those individuals and the sacredness from those individuals in, in cities stem from ancient Egypt, okay? Even Mohammed, people don't listen to that. Hammurabi, Ham, Hamilcar, Barker, who is the father of Hannibal, uh, Alhambra, which is the cathedral of the Moors in Spain. So you see these personification of blackness all across the ancient world and even in the modern world, hidden in sacred script, scriptures that we do not understand. And so we see here, Ham is also, you know, has the meaning, you know, as being the father of the African nation. And we're going to look at many uh, definitions coming right out of uh, um, Christian uh, uh, dictionaries, Hebrew dictionaries that explain this. But because we didn't have access to this literature, we didn't understand that. And so when you look at Ham, and this is coming right out of a, a, a biblical encyclopedia, it says Ham or Cham. And that's very you know, you got to understand that's very significant. That just show you that it variates in spelling. It keeps the hum or the charm or the e, or it could be e, it could be him or it could be Kim. But it means burnt. It means swarthy. It means black. You see what I'm saying? And if you come down to the uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seventh line, it says ham. Cam, which is black, burnt, was the father of Cush, Mishraim, Pun, and Canaan. So right there, it, 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 it reveals to us that Egypt was black. It says, it is believed that he had Africa for his inheritance, huh? And that, pe and that he peopled it, but he dwelt in Egypt. So that right there reveals to us that uh, the peoples of Egypt were black. And that Egypt, and the one thing that's very clear in the Bible, that Egypt is the brother of Cush, which in, which in the uh, Greek is Ethiopia, meaning burnt face. And we're going to get into that and into this, re, you know, revealing, you know, the, the black divinity all across the ancient world. Ham, he dwelt in Egypt, okay, burnt, swarthy, black, had Africa for his inheritance. Now, this is a white man giving us this information. And so if he has the information, what, ha what happens in Hollywood when they project the Egyptians to be white? Did they not understand? And see, this is the thing because what has happened is that, you know, most of the world act like the uh, black community, uh, the conscious community, the African-centered community is creating this of uh, their own you know, uh, uh, psychotic, you know, making and, you know, uh, but they don't talk about all the Europeans that also know this information and write this information. It says it, it, it is believed that he had Africa for his inheritance and that he peopled it, but he dwelt in Egypt. Okay. And so e Egypt throughout the Bible was called the land of Ham, the land of blackness. Okay, the you know of the black people. So right here, this is the uh, the People's Bible Encyclopedia, the uh, the People's Publication Society. It was produced 1924. Now in here it says Cush, Mizrahim, and Pun were the progenitor progenitors of the tribe that people peopled Africa, and Canaan became the father. Of those that principally occupy Phoenicia and Palestine, Glacier, uh, Glasser has identified. See here, the. Oh wait a minute, I didn't. Even, I didn't even pick it over. Let me let me push it off. Uh, had uh, Mizraim, uh, uh, Kush, Mizraim, and Pooh were the progenitors of the tribe that people of Africa and Canaan became the father of those that principally occupy Phoenicia. And, in Palestine, Glasher has identified the charm. See, right here is spelled C H A M. You see, charm or calm. You see what I'm saying? It could be charm because you're going to see that in India, you got the chomper. 
which is spelled C-H-A-M. And then you got CAM, which, which can be spelled K-H-A-M. See what I'm saying? But regardless of the pronunciation, both of them are personifications of blackness, which we going to prove. And it says that the charm or harm of the biblical races list the races with the Amu uh, uh, worshippers of Am. You know what I'm saying? The name of Ham alone is the uh, if, 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 of the three sons of Noah. If our identification be correct, uh, correct, is known to have been given to a country. You see what I'm saying? So we have now. Let's deal with. Uh, one of the sons of uh, e uh, of Ham, Ethiopia, uh, Kush. Now in the Hebrew is Kush or Kush, okay? But in the Greek is Ethiopia, a country of burnt faces, lying to the south of Egypt, corresponding to what is now called the Sudan. You see, the country of the blacks. So it got to be understood that in the ancient world it was sudan that they referred to when they were speaking of ethiopia okay it's not the ethiopia today it was the sudan and even in that the sud even in the arabic that also means black so there's no running from the origin of these countries and these individuals okay the name kush and it says in the uh that's the authorized version, A.V. Ethiopia, is found in the Egyptian Kish, evident, evidently applied to the same territory. In one passage in the description of the Garden of Eden, and here we go. Now they want to, they want to, uh, uh, you know, try to throw a curveball in there. An Asiatic Kush or Ethiopia must be intended. So when it came to the Garden of Eden, they didn't want to say it was in Africa. And so they say, well, it must be an Asiatic Kush or Ethiopia that's intended. It don't mean no, it don't make no goddamn difference because Ethiopia still means burnt faith. So goddamn it, whether it was in Africa, whether it was in Asia, it still wasn't no cracker. So I, I must stress that. In all other passages, the words Ethiopian and the Ethiopians, with one possible exception, the Arabians that were near the Ethiopians, Second Chronicles 21, 16, we may refer to Arabians opposite Ethiopia, may be safely considered to mean an African country and people or peoples. Okay, now this is very powerful right here, coming out of that same encyclopedia is going to speak to the because Mizraim is Egypt and we got to understand that Egypt is referred to as the land of Ham which we will get to you know now it says the names of Mizraim and the descendants of Mizraim in Genesis 10 uh, 13 14 and 1 Chronicles 1 11 12 appear to be all names of nations rather than individuals now that's very uh, interesting that when you talk about the children of Ham, Mizraim, Cush, Canaan, Pum, they all nations. Why the so-called Shemites and Jephthah, the descendants of Jephthah, are just individuals. They are never referred to as nations. You understand what I'm saying? You don't even get the Israelites don't get a nation until the Egyptians are almost 2,000 years old even according to the Bible. And that's very interesting since all three of the sons supposedly came off the boat at the same time. How was one of the sons able to jump into uh, nationalism, creating uh, megalithic structures that it would have taken thousands, hundreds of thousands of years to develop the knowledge? And they jump right where the Semites and the Japhites remain Nomadic tribes for 2,000 years. That's very, un, you know, interesting. Okay? But it says, uh, and that these nations include far more than Egypt. Mizraim, listen, Mizraim, therefore, like Cush and perhaps Ham, geographically represent, represents a center whence colonies went forth in the remotest peri period of post-Diluvian history, we regard the distribution of the Mizrites, which are the Egyptians, 
and showing that their colonies were but a, but a great part of the great migration that gave the Cushites. Now you see there, he the Cushites and the Mizraites, which are the Egyptians, are synonymous. They they are considered to be the same. Black. You see what I'm saying? It gave the Cushites the command of the Indian Ocean. And I've been speaking that, you know, all my, you know, teaching career over the last 20, 000, um, you know, I'm almost say 20, 000, 20 years. You understand the command of the Indian Ocean. So when I said that the Naga and the Kush, see, this is a European that already understand this. The early Greeks spoke that there was, you know, just, you know, that this was one empire split in half. So when you hear these names, I don't want you to think that it's just a coincidence. No, these are one people that are, you know, interchanging culture all, you know, across the uh, uh, what today is known as the Indian Ocean. But in reality, it's the Kushite Ocean because it wasn't no India at that time. It was referred to as Kush, which explain now listen, which explains the affinity that the Egyptian monuments show us between the pre-Hellenistic Cretans. Even understanding that Crete was technically more connected to ancient Egypt than it ever was to Greece. And it was actually uh, the Greeks. Uh, what particular? What's the um the the Mycenaeans? Was it the, no? It was. It wasn't the Mycenaeans. It wasn't. It, but I get to what particular tribe that was of Greeks that destroyed the Crete, the uh the Crete nation. It might have been the Mycenaeans. It might have been the Mycenaeans. It might have been the Mycenaean Greeks that destroyed Crete. And so again, we see Ethiopia, Kush country of burnt faces. South of Egypt's corresponding to what is now called the Sudan, country of the blacks. Uh, the Arabians that were near the Ethiopians. So we understand that when they say the Arabians that were, and you when you see were, you see it's in italic. What does that mean? And when it says were near, it does not mean geographically. It means in, in blood that they were near the Ethiopians. Not the other ones that would look like Arabs and whatnot. We are talking about the original uh, peoples of that area, the from Sheba and Dadin and, and you know and the Sabaeans, which the Bible clearly states were sons of Ethiopia, and they already said that anybody with under that bloodline should be considered an African country or or and people or people. Okay, the first capital of Babylon was Cush. So when you look at Sumer from three thousand, you look at the first dynasty. A twin is Keisha. So you see right there again that the vowel is uh, interchangeable. Okay, it's interchangeable. So here you get uh, Keish. You get Keish, but it's actually Kush. And that relates back to Nimrod, who in the Bible was the founder of Mesopotamia, Babylon, Sumer, Assyria. Okay, he built, he built uh, Nineveh. And all of this was established by Nimrod, the son of Ethiopia, Cush. Now, you see in Genesis 17, we see that when uh, Abraham makes his covenant with God and he becomes the father of the Hebrew nation, and he is the father. A lot of people are going to say, uh, Heber and all, that's, that's, uh, that's garbage. He didn't, God didn't make no covenant with Heber. Okay, he made the covenant with Abraham. And so the, the, the father of the Hebrew, or the, which later be, or the Israelites, is Abraham. Okay, and he's not only just the father of the Israelites, but also the Arab and also the Christian. They all go back to Abraham. It says, neither shall thy name anymore be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham. Okay, and so you see that harm, and we just said that harm means black. Okay, it means swarthy. And it also relates back to Egypt. 
And so when they use this term, this pe this person is not really a real person, but but it reflects to the fact that it reflects to the fact that uh, the knowledge, the sacred knowledge, this uh, originate from ancient Egypt. You see what I'm saying? And so we must, you know, we got to understand there's a lot of occult meanings behind, you know, these individuals. That the individual is a created creature to, you know, to, you know, hide a, 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 a deeper meaning. You see what I'm saying? And the deeper meaning that all of these religions and all of these nations come up out of Africa, up out of Africa, and come up out of particularly Ethiopia and Egypt. And so you see here, Keisha's Kush, and that's why many of the reconstructions of many of the ziggurats look very similar, especially to Saqqara of Egypt, which is, uh, a, you know, the first pyramid, a step pyramid in the ancient world. You know, they don't, you know, and so the model that they use, even with uh, the wall surrounding this, uh, this ziggurat, you see it looks very similar to Saqqara, which I don't have in here right now, but, you know, look that up. And so you see Ham, Murabi. And so even in, you know, you see, even in that, you see Mu, which, or more, you understand? Or more, you see the M-U-R. So you see that it's even more than one personification of blackness in that he was the lawgiver. Now, we, once we understand harm meaning black, we understand that black people established law all across Africa and Asia. There are no Caucasians in no Mesopotamia, that this is only an extension of Africa. And you see even now uh, is Hamu, and then you get even into Samu. You see what I'm saying? Because we're going to prove beyond any reasonable doubt that the, the Kushites uh, control all of South, West, and East Asia, okay? From Mesopotamia all the way into Southern China. You understand? That's why when you go into all the, the most ancient civilizations, all across, it's in the South. When you talk about the greatest of the civilization, you know, you go to India, most, a lot of that ancient and, and most advanced knowledge is in the South. When you go over to Angkor Wat in, in the Khmer uh, uh, civilization, you see it's in the South. It's in the South, Vietnam, Thailand, Burma. You see what I'm saying? Vietnam. And so you see Hamu, Samu. You see, now you even seeing it, word combinations. You see what I'm saying? Hamu, Robbie. And I'm going I'm to I'm show you some other combinations. You got to understand there's a lot of occult knowledge in this right now. And so you get, you see Hamu, Robbie. You see Samu, Robbie. Samu, Hamu. Okay, again, showing you right here, Samurai, Hamurabi. You see right there with the Samurai, you see the uh, horns, which is very sim a symbolic of Hedero, and you see the sun disc right there sitting in the middle. Many times you will see the uh, dragon, which is symbolic of the serpent that sits on the pineal gland of the ancient Pharaoh. So, you know, we could break that down much heavier in on a in a di different video. So when you see right here, Hamurabi, Hamurabi. Now, if you take and split the Ham, the Mu, and Rabi, and you take the Mu and put it in front of the Ham, you get Mu Ham. You drop the Rabi and add Med, you get Mu Med. You see what I'm saying? Watch that. You take the Mu, put it in front of the Ham. Drop the Rabi and add Med, and you get Muhammad out of Hamurabi. You see what I'm saying? But in, you know, the Ham is the personification of blackness. So, what, you, what does that say? Muhammad, the ancient Egyptian origins of, of Islam, even though it's hidden, even though it's in occult literature and a, 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 a occult personification, 
it still relates back to the sacredness of blackness and not just the sacredness of black, blackness, but of ancient Egypt being the source of the sacred knowledge. And, but they leave that out and then they put, you know, the Arab people, the Arab civilization as the progenitors of this knowledge, but the those who have a greater understanding of the words and the meanings can take that far deeper and reveal to you that it's actually ancient Egypt. And so when you go even deeper into the Moors in Spain, who ruled for 700 years from around 700 A.D. to about 14, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 14, uh, 11, something up in there. But they ruled for almost uh, 750, close to 800 years. And so one of their cathedrals and great cathedrals, more cathedrals and, and mosques was the Alhambra. The Alhambra. And even in Islam, you see, you hear the term Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. God is great. What kind of God, though? Alham, black. The black God is great. Okay? The black God is great. Okay? Alham do Allah. Okay? And so even when you go into Bethlehem, see, you see the hymn, but you got to understand there is no vowels in the Hebrew or in the Arabic or the Medu. And so many times the vowels are in a chain. You see what I'm saying? So when you see Bethlehem, it is also Bethlehem, but they threw the, but you know, like him, you get Kim. You get, some people spell it Cam, Cammy. You understand what I'm saying? It all relates to blackness. So when you say Bethlehem, and, and you know, and once you understand that Ham means black, is the house of the divine blacks. And this is the house where, uh, in the Bible, the, the, the Christ, the child Christ is born. He's born in Bethlehem. He's born in the house of the divine blacks. And so we, we even get to Hamilka, Barca, okay, the father of Hannibal, the great king, great general of Phoenicia, okay, well, Carthage, which was a colony of Phoenicia. Okay, which was a son of Canaan, which was a son of Ham. Okay, Canaan, Phoenicia was, uh, uh, Canaan was brother of Ethiopia, brother of Egypt, and we have already established that they are black. Okay, and so Carthage was a colony of Phoenicia. And you see right there, Hannibal and his, his, his elephant, and you see that Hamil, Hamilcar, Barker is the father of Hannibal. You see right here, you see the Carthaginian Empire around 27 BC. And you see that, you know, Africans were dominating many, much of the Mediterranean, Sicily, Sardinia, uh, southern Spain, France, um, uh, even controlled the, the Straits of Gibraltar, L uh, Algeria, Libya, you see. We see that the, the black, in which is not something to be surprised of, since Africa is the motherland of, of black people anyway. So there's nothing, but, you know, today you might see a whole different picture. So it would, you know, it would amaze people to understand that this was once African stronghold. So the Hamites and Kushites were in Europe long before the Moors. And so you see here uh, the, the uh, African center writer, in this Kamit Kush. You see how he spells Kamit, K-H-A-M-I-T. As the biblical uh, encyclopedia made reference to Ham also being spelled Cham, C-H-A-M. And then you go to the ancient uh, uh, civilization, Kambu, Kambu Jadesia, Kambu Jadesia, which was uh, the... Uh, civilization of the Mon Khmer's, where you see uh, the temples of Angkor Wat and the Bayan. You see modern Cambodia, and we go even out of that, Cambodia, people don't understand, coming out of Cambodia, Dacia. You see what I'm saying? Cam, Kamit. You see what I'm saying? And you see right there, we see Angkor Wat, 
You understand? Is a temple complex at Angkor, Cambodia. You see? And so that is also, you know, the, the root or the modern term for Cambo, Judasia, Cambodia. So you see Ham and Kam and Cham and Kim, all of that is rooted in the personification of the of, of divine blackness. Abraham, uh, Abram to Abraham. Seeing that when God, you know, made this covenant with Abram, he when he elevated him, he added blackness to his personification. Which and so you see here, uh, this is a uh, Genesis of, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know exactly what chapter it is. If I'm not mistaken, it was seven, but we'll get to that. And it says, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee and, and their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to be thy, and to thy seed after thee. And so he then he elevated him by adding harm to his name. Now, here's another one that a lot of people don't look at. Nag Hammadi, where the Gnostic, uh, 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 a library of ancient Gnostic texts were found. And many, you know, revealing some of the true origins of the so-called Bible. And you see that Nag, which is also rooted in Naga. You see what I'm saying? And we're going to look at, uh, uh, and not just words, but word combinations. Because not, you just like you got not hum Mahdi, not hum, hum Mahdi, where you found these Gnostic texts. And again, it's always something of divinity. When you speak these names, you're going to find that in these areas, divine literature, divine cities and states and civilizations are all connected to the roots of these terms. So here you got not Champa, not Hamadi. See, so the charm and the harm is actually, so this is actually the same word with different suffixes. Okay, you got some suffixes, the pa, cham, pa, or ham, madi. These are all suffixes, but the true understanding is the harm and the charm, the nag. The nag is naga, represent the divine serpent, the, the king cobra, the king the queen, Cobra, and the, and the serpent is divinity, creation, because we understand that serpents move in waves. And so because you see a energy is always depicted in waves, I don't care if it's sound or solar, you see a serpentine movement of waves. And because uh, energy is me measured in waves and the serpent's body is, is divinely moving in these uh, personifications and is connected with water. The Naga is a water serpent. So you see that the Nagas many times uh, live near water. You see what I'm saying? And so you see here Nag Champa. And so you see here this is one of the charms and the peoples of Nag Champa was re referred to as the charms. Okay? Now this is a uh, you know, I get into uh, the Southern Indian Empire, which you got uh, one of the uh, more p profound historic sites uh, in that area that they call in the green, the uh, Vajayana, uh, Vajayanaga, Vajayanaga Kingdom. And you'll see that one of the profound and historic sites in that southern area of India is Hampi. And it's a world heritage site. You see what I'm saying? You see the pyramids there. And so it does not matter where you go in the world. When you deal with that term, Ham, Cham, Kim, Sam, even uh, Samurai, all of that re re relates back to blackness and also in dealing with the samurai where it said that you have to have at least one drop of, of African blood. I don't know how the hell you're just going to get one drop. I don't know how the hell you do that, but you have to have at least one drop of black blood to be a samurai. Okay? At least one drop. I don't know how you get one drop, but somebody going to explain it. 
Uh, and so even in as you go into uh, the Tamil language, okay, deep in Indonesia, you will see that uh, you know when you talk about Kayla or better yet, which means black, but another form of uh, uh, of Kayla or my Kayla, you understand what I'm saying? Is Yama. Okay, when you look here, you looking up the different. When you say uh, Kayla, which means black, and Kayla has many of the personification of the Egyptian Kushite god best, it says uh, Kayla is a word used in Sanskrit to mean time. The Tamil word uh, Kamala, Kamla, or uh, Kala, uh, Kamla, uh, uh, Kalam, let me get it, Kamla. Kalam refers to duration or uh, interval in time. It is also the name of a deity which, uh, in which since it, it is not always distinguishable, distinguishable from Kala meaning black. It is often used as one of the various names or forms of Yama. Okay, so we, again, we didn't got back off into it. That that yam, whether it's psalm, whether do you know, as you go into diff different uh, uh, areas, they might have a a a uh, 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 I, I don't know as a consonant. You know what I'm saying? That but the root of it is um. You know, which seems to mean black. I don't care where you go, and the, it, it signifies black. And you even got a yam. Uh, of which is supposedly talked about in the ancient Kushite text, a nation or, or, of Yom, which the Egyptians made, you know, had a, a considerable uh, trading with, which was even deeper, far south than even Kush, as you see here on the map. So you see Yom, even in, and so you got Yom and Yama in uh, India, in uh, Indonesia, and then you got. Yam in 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 uh in Africa, even further south than Cushing. So you looking at the charms here, you understand you see the charms, which is harm, which is black. And so when you talk about Nog Champa or Chamba, we don't even understand. We've been burning Nog Champa for so damn long, we didn't even realize within that and rooted our own divinity, where the, just like uh, uh, frankincense and myrrh, and another one that is civilized in Cambodia. We even see that even in, you know, deep down in the south, uh, uh, a timeline, laws, you see there was a civilization, Cambodia, which is, you know, uh, very similar to Kemet, the root of that, black, as you see in chemistry, the, the black arts, uh, uh, alchemy, you understand what I'm saying? All of these are relating to the origins and the greatness of black people. Cambodasia. Okay, and so we see the Africans of Asia continue, continuing the language and uh, uh, the culture and language of the Nile Valley. And so we see also here uh, to the right, Mon Khmer. What is that saying? Because those Africans went in, back and forth from Africa into India, into uh, uh, Southeast Asia via the mines. You see what I'm saying? We are also going to understand that Kashmir, uh, uh, Kash, uh, Kushmir, you understand, which is Kushmir, you understand what I'm saying, signifying that, you know, much of the Nile Valley civilization had penetrated into the, uh, 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 into what we call India. And when you understand the minds and how they go back and forth from Africa to Asia, you're going to see that it's not that hard to have such. And when you can just almost put a boat and make, just put a boat out there and it's going to bring you directly to India. And so you see uh, the Himalay or Himalayas, which is the Himalayas. Okay. You got the uh, Hindu Kush mountains. And so here we're going to talk about and prove. It said, Israel also came into Egypt and, and, and Jacob sojourned sir John, sir John, John in the land of Ham. And then and Isaiah, I got to get, because I'm moving so quick, I didn't put it in there. And Isaiah, you could look this up, 
This is verse 25. I'll get the chapter, you know, after the fact. Whom the Lord of hosts shall, shall bless, saying, Bless be Egypt, my people. My people. Listen to that. This is God now. Nah. It says, Whom the Lord of hosts shall, shall bless, saying, Bless be my people, Egypt, and, and Assyria, the work of my hands, and Israel, my my minor inheritance okay so right there in that verse it it, it 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 proves beyond any doubt blessed be egypt my people now if we understand that uh egypt is also called the land of ham and that ham means burnt swarthy black that is proof positive that uh black people are the the people of god him or herself. We are the direct descendants of that God. We are the people of God. You see what I'm saying? Now, it said, now I, I put this in here. It said, now I put Ham in there, but it says, out of Egypt have I called my son. Okay, now what does it mean? Out of Egypt have I called my son. You can look that up. I put the Ham in there so you understand that Egypt is the land of Ham. And that Ham means burnt, swarthy, black. Okay, so when when you clear and make the clear distinction, it says, out of Ham have I called my son. It means out of blackness have I called my son. Okay, and then when you want to get to the, you know, the because uh, as so uh, above, as uh, below, so above, as above, so below. And so when you get to the true occult understanding out of blackness have I called my son you will see that the son is actually uh the the s u n and when it means that it says out of blackness how this is when the creator brought forth creation and brought the son through the black hole and so you got two understandings there out of Egypt have I called my son out of ham have I called my son out of blackness have I called my S-O-N, which is Jesus being called, or Jacob being called out of Egypt, either or, Jacob or Jesus being called, but symbolize those are both occult symbols of the S-U-N, the 12 sons of Jacob, the 12 disciples of Jesus. And so the true understanding is that both of those individual, individuals represent the soul of method, so it's the S-U-N. And so right here, uh, you see here again, he, uh, uh, Psalms uh, 78, 51, where Egypt is called the land of Ham. He struck down all the firstborn of Egypt, the first fruits uh, of manhood in the tents of Ham. Psalms 105, 23, then Israel entered Egypt, Jacob resided as a foreigner in the land of Ham. Psalm 105, 27, they perform his signs among them, his wonders in the land of Ham. So that right there, again, when it says that out of Egypt I have called my son, out of blackness have I called my son, whether it be Jacob or whether it be Jesus. And there's no way you're going to make me believe that the the, the children of Jacob, the Israelites, stayed in a nation of blackness for 400 years, and they did not leave a black people. If they, would, if they came in, 77 people, and they left out of there after 400 and some odd years, that they were black. Okay, there's no way you're going to make me believe anything else. Okay, so I want to thank you, family, for your time, your energy, and any and all donations. Make sure you get over to kingseti.com, generalseti.com. Get over to my Patreon, General Sarah Susan Seti. And I want to say thank you for your time and peace.